Hello and welcome to Las Vegas. I am chilling at a random Airbnb here with a ridiculous shirt that I may or may not keep. We'll see. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. It seemed appropriate for Vegas, but it still might be a little much or maybe not quite me. <sighs> it's still hot here. It feels like summer and I live in a hot area, so I feel like that's saying something. Anyway, I think the focus of this video will be about a new hybrid setup that I've been trying that I really like. It's in these rackets, my custom VS and a very modified Blade 104 that I'm messing around with again because I just can't help myself. And yeah, this Pure Arrow VS is obviously very modified as well. You probably can't even recognize what it is. <laughs> custom paint job and they both, wait for it, have headbutt caps on them. I'm gonna set up the camera somewhere else. All right, let's chill here for a little bit. So if you guys watch any of my content, you probably know I'm a big fan of Toroline and Restring. Those two companies stand out from the competition, in my opinion, largely because they provide so much snapback. And because they provide so much snapback, you can get an insane amount of topspin as well as a lot of durability because the strings aren't eating into themselves as much as they will with any other polyester string, like literally everybody else. I've tried so many strings, nobody else comes even close. And I've made that point quite a few times, but I feel like it's always important to make that point. And with that point made, obviously I have a very high standard for snapback and topspin potential, etc. So anytime I try a new string, I'm generally pretty skeptical it's gonna come close at all. But this is a string that actually does come close. And mm, maybe not surprising, it is a Toro line string. And it's actually one of the first things I tried from Toro line a long time ago. And the string is Toro line ether. And I actually only have it in the mains. The cross string is one of my favorite strings of all time, Wasabi X. I guess I'll talk about both strings in this video because that has been my setup. But let's start with Ether. After talking to Toroline a bit, my understanding is pretty much that Ether is super similar to Wasabi, but in a thinner gauge. It's 17 light. And I guess if it's really basically the same string, I don't know why it's not just part of the Wasabi line. There must be something notably different about that, but I'll talk to Toroline a little more and come back in a future video with more insight. But for now, it's Ether 17 light blue. It looks like the same exact blue as Wasabi X. You couldn't really tell that this is a hybrid setup. And that's kind of cool. Now, really quick about Wasabi X. I said it's one of my favorite strings of all time. I mean that, but I do mostly mean that as a cross string. I honestly like this cross string so much that I am much more likely to use it in the crosses than I am a full bed of Restring Zero or Toroline Wasabi. And that's what I've been doing recently. Like my last 10 string jobs for myself have always had Wasabi X in the crosses. Now Wasabi X is such a great string because it gives me so many of the qualities I want from a string, but some of those qualities don't necessarily matter as a cross string. And one of those things I just don't need a cross string to be is shaped. It essentially gives me everything that I want in terms of snapback and everything, durability, but in a round shape. And beyond that, the string is actually a little bit more comfortable and a little bit softer. So it does bring a slightly different set of characteristics without compromising on the most important ones that I want from the mains. There is no sacrifice in snapback or topspin potential when using Wasabi X as the cross. And that's what's so beautiful about this string. All right, let's pick one more location just to keep this video spicy. Oh cool, there's broken glass over here. Is that what this is? Yeah. Uh, and I'm not wearing shoes, so maybe somewhere else. Where was I? Anyway, with everything I've just said, and clearly, all the strings I just mentioned pretty much set the bar far and above anything else I've tried. So the pool or pile of strings that I would even select from is very small. And I'm very happy to find one more string that I can confidently add to that list. The trade-offs with a thinner string such as Ether compared to Toroline, which is actually generally 16, I think, or 17 gauge. It might be 16 light and 17 gauge. I generally use the smaller gauges, so I honestly forget. Restring zero comes in 17 and 16. The trade-offs going to a thinner string are generally less durability but more power, more comfort and feel. So let's talk about the durability first. A thinner string will probably always be less durable. However, I said that these strings are phenomenally durable because of the superior snapback. And when you have snapback like this, the strings are not eating into themselves. So for me, going down a half gauge 
isn't causing me any anxiety with durability because I'm actually not sure that these strings are gonna break any sooner. They probably will, but strings like these always last me about two to three times longer than your typical polyester string. Again, because of that superior snapback, which this string very much has. And I like some of the trade-offs of a thinner string. I like more feel. I like more comfort. I suppose a thinner gauge also doesn't maintain tension quite as well, but in my opinion, it's not a huge difference. And you can string a little bit higher to offset that, which I have. Point is, for a lot of people, and in some ways for myself, I think the combination of pros and cons are generally favorable, mostly because I think the biggest problem going to thinner strings is the durability. But with strings like this, it's really not an issue. So if you're a fan of the strings that I've been talking about for some time, Restring Zero and Toroline Wasabi, Wasabi X now, throw Ether into the mix and give it a try. I think it's a very likable string for anyone that's a fan of the strings I just mentioned. And if you're a fan of the strings I just mentioned, it's certainly worth a try. And if you haven't tried any of the strings I've talked about, this could be a good place to start. Personally, I would highly recommend whatever string you do try to also try Wasabi X. I've tried to be very clear about this, but Wasabi X is my favorite cross string. So as much as I like Toroline, Wasabi, and now Ether in the mains, Restring Zero in the mains, I do prefer Wasabi X in the crosses to a full bed of those other strings. Again, I just don't see a reason that the cross string needs to be shaped. And if I can go to a round string with no compromises, I would prefer to. And if that cross string can offer some slightly different characteristics that are favorable to the overall string bed and feel, even better. And that's exactly what Wasabi X does. So if you wanna follow my top recommendation, try Restring Zero, try Toroline Wasabi, try Ether, and you can try them in a full bed, but I recommend getting Wasabi X and trying each of those with Wasabi X in the crosses. That's my top recommendation. That way you try everything, all the combinations with Wasabi X in the crosses. And if you're just gonna pick one of those mains, I don't know if I really have one to pick between Zero, Wasabi, or Ether. Try whichever one interests you for whatever reason. If you get Restring Zero or Ether, it's gonna look basically like the same color in the whole string bed, if that's important to you. Restring Zero maintains tension phenomenally well. It's a little bit more crisp of a string, I would say. I tend to string that one a little bit lower than I restring Toroline's Wasabi. Wasabi comes in a bunch of different colors. It's a little bit softer of a string. And between Wasabi and Zero, I actually think it's cool to get the thicker gauge if you have a more open string pattern sometimes, just to maximize that durability. Or like I did in these rackets, get some ether and put Wasabi X in the crosses. And my final recommendation or tip is this. If you're using Wasabi X in the crosses, I would go maybe two to three pounds higher than I would whatever you're stringing. If you're stringing zero or wasabi. If you're stringing ether, since it's a thinner gauge string, maybe just do the mains and crosses at the same tension. The reason I recommend going a little bit higher in the crosses, it's a slightly thinner string. It's a slightly softer string. I think by going up a few pounds or just a couple pounds, it evens out some of the differences between the strings to make the string bed overall perform a little more consistently. It's kind of the same thing you would do if you strung 17 gauge mains, but 18 gauge crosses. Not everybody does that, but the people who do generally string the crosses a little bit higher. So that's my recommendation. Go slightly higher in the crosses with Wasabi X, unless you have ether in the mains, because ether is actually slightly, slightly thinner than Wasabi X. Now that I've said all this, I feel like it's inviting a lot of comments about why some people do hybrid tensions or hybrid strings in general. I hope this video covered some of those questions, but I know I'm gonna have to make another video about hybrid strings in general. Why people do it, my thoughts on it. Obviously I do hybrid strings sometimes, but I can get into a conversation about why people do and what it offers and how it should be done. So let me know if you'd like to see that video. And if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comments anyway. Be sure to use my discount code for the strings I've mentioned. The links are in the description. You'll get 10% off of Restring and 20% off of Toroline. And if you are not in the United States, you can message Restring. They will work out a way to ship to you. It might cost a little extra because obviously it costs them a lot extra to ship outside of the country. But they're working on having distribution in Asia, in Europe, so stay tuned for that. Toroline has a little bit more distribution, but a lot of countries are going to find that they have to pay extra for shipping as well. But their website allows for it, whereas Restring does not. But message Restring if you want it and you're willing to pay for the extra shipping costs. And yeah, as I said, use my codes. Yes, I get a small commission on those sales, but it's a great way to support me and the channel, as well as two of my absolutely favorite string companies. So it's a win-win for everybody. You get a discount, I get a commission, they get a sale, and the brands grow. And honestly, you're probably gonna love these strings. For anyone that cares a lot about strings, I think these ones are very interesting and stand out a lot, so I would recommend it to that crowd. For those who don't care about strings, honestly, 
Try these strings and see if you still don't care about strings. There's always gonna be an audience of people out there that think this or that just doesn't matter. It's the player, not the whatever. But rackets matter and strings matter. Honestly, for a long time, I felt like a lot of polyester strings were basically interchangeable, like Hyper G to RPM Blast, Confidential, Polytor Pro. Yeah, there's some subtle differences, but they're just not massive. This really sets itself apart from that crowd. So I too was kind of in a pool of people that felt like a lot of polyester strings just weren't that meaningfully different from each other. A lot of them kind of suck, obviously, but the ones that don't and are kind of the type of string that I want, I could more or less just play with any of them. But now I would prefer a not to. I much prefer these strings for so many reasons, which I made clear in the video. You darn near have to pay me a lot to not use these in my racket, seriously. I'd be compromising on my tennis to be using other strings. And I'd have to string more often because they break sooner for sure. So yeah, if strings don't matter, you can at least appreciate the durability that this offers and string your rackets less often. Anyway, I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you for tuning in. It's been fun out here in Vegas. I hope to get a little more Vegas footage. I might talk about tennis in high altitude. I've played between 2200 and 3100 feet out here in Vegas. I didn't know that the elevation could actually vary about a thousand feet just within this city, but it can. And these are the only two rackets I took with me to Vegas, and both of them are strung with my new favorite hybrid. And just so we're clear, I'm not saying that this actually is my favorite, I'm saying it's one of my favorites. I don't necessarily have a clear favorite between those three. Yeah, they're all just so good, but maybe in time I will have a favorite, we'll see. But I gotta say, it's nice to have a few options that I really love. Oh, all right, well, I guess that's it for now, but I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Gotta get up to the rest of whatever my day out here is gonna be like. I know a couple things, it'll be hot, and it'll be dry. And maybe I'll get to play some tennis, we'll see. All right, I'll catch you later. I hope you're having some good tennis out there and I will see you in a future video. Bye for now. Oh, and for anyone wondering why there's head butt caps on my rackets, it turns out I like the shape better. The butt caps are weighted, gives it a little tail weight, but it also allows me to extend the rackets just a little bit, like a quarter inch. And there's that silly old part of me that still wants an extended length racket. Well, maybe more on that later. It's time to go, bye.